Hello, it's Dansky here with another tutorial and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to take a 12 column responsive grid and start laying out graphics for a website. Okay, if you haven't seen the first part I'll put a link in the description where we just created the 12 column grid and the width of our artboard is 1170 pixels. So if you haven't done that yet I suggest doing that one first just so we're both working on the same grid. Okay. If you've got this already, then let's get started. So I'm going to select my rectangle tool and I'm just going to start to draw out the different elements. Okay, so I'm going to use just red for now. And remember, if you've got your smart guides and your snap to point select on in the view menu, everything should snap in place. So we're going to have this as a nice header image up here. And we're going to create a rectangle that is 1170 wide and 50 pixels high. And we're going to make that yellow and that will just serve as our navigation. Might even make it a bit shallower actually, make it 40 pixels high. And this is one of the advantages for working in Illustrator, having the smart guides and everything is there's no half pixels and everything does really snap quite nicely. And down here, I'm going to have another rectangle. I'm going to make this one 100 high. Make this yellow as well. It's just good to use different colors as you're laying it out and you can, you can change these to whatever you want when you come to finalize the design. Let's make that 150. I'm going to contain a bit of messaging in there and then underneath we're going to have some imagery I think and this is where the grid system becomes really handy so you can create your shapes and these thinner gutters down the middle are the parts where you want to line your shapes up to you can see like this. So if I was viewing this on a desktop computer you'd be seeing four across. If I was viewing it on a smartphone for example the elements would stack up something like that perhaps. Or if you were on a tablet they might stack up like that. So it's really good to have this gutter because then you just have a bit of space and then the elements can respond to different devices depending on what you're viewing the site on. Okay, we know that the width of these gutters is 30 pixels, so I'm going to bring this one up here so that lines up nicely, and then I'm going to go to transform, go to Y, and then just do minus 30. Nope, I always get that the wrong way around, plus 30. That's quite a good way of just offsetting any shapes with a specific number of pixels. Okay. I'm going to select these and again repeat. Actually, no, let's keep those off. So we'll just focus on this top part for now. Pick up to view, guides, and we can hide the guides. So this is going to form part of our web layout. And what I'm going to do now is just pick some some colours that are a little less in your face. And then this here is going to be our big image. So now what we're going to do is we've got the core elements of our site design. So now this is going to be a carousel at the top. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the ellipse tool. We're going to create some small circles and 
holding shift and alt just drag out and again as in the last video we can use command d or control d on pc to just repeat these so it repeats that last action and we can select them all go to object and group and then if we select that group and this big grey box here you can go up to this one horizontal align center okay and you can see it aligns this group to this box it also however ignores the fact that you've got the artboard and it will just align it regardless so what you want to do is go to this icon here and align to artboard so then what it will do is it will center both these elements together but it would also it will also center it to the artboard itself like that okay i'm going to make these a bit smaller i think and then probably drag them down here somewhere and then ungroup them and these three I'm going to set the opacity to 30 so this is going to be our active carousel slide here and we're going to create some arrows so people can navigate through the slides and what we're going to do is selecting our rectangle tool we're just going to draw a very thin rectangle like this select the direct selection tool those bottom two anchor points and just drag them out like that okay then if you get the arrow tool and just select this and go copy paste in place and then object reflect and reflect it along a horizontal axis it will do that and then holding a shift you can just drag it down and it will snap into place now if you select both those shapes Go to your Pathfinder palette and then click Unite. It now makes that into one complete shape. And that's going to be our arrow. And then you can select that and using the scale tool over here, you can just adjust it to whichever kind of arrow shape you want. So I think something like that is a pretty good size. And yeah. There we go. It'll make it a bit smaller as well. And again, you can select that arrow, the big grey box, vertical line center. I'll knock it off center so you can see, but you can select those, and it just knocks it into into alignment. We're just going to hold shift and alt and duplicate that one and then object reflect and this time along a vertical axis so now we've created our carousel slide at the top with the navigation and the arrows which users can use to scroll through the different slides okay next we're going to select our, tele our text tool and we're going to type some text Helvetica font. We're going to center it and then blow it up a little bit. And this can be whatever messaging that you'd like it to be. And then again, just aligning it to the center of the artboard. Make that a little bit bigger, I think. So now we've got space for some content to go in. I hope that tutorial was helpful. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe for more tutorials. And in the next part, we'll be adding some imagery and content and finishing our design up. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.